of today uh, like most of the recruiters like i'm just i'll talk about first the job scenario the recruiters um, hr people who are the first touch point when you want a job they have a conventional approach of finding candidates right having a degree like filling these details um so having a degree is definitely helpful in passing those mandatory stages like passing those stages so nowadays if you see there are a lot of automatic resume screening softwares that are there um a senior of mine from my college is actually actually built a startup that uses you know like uh, intelligent natural language processing to pro- uh, filter and process the resumes right so yeah for from that perspective if you want to make an impression the first impression in the first touch point of company the hr people and recruiters definitely a degree is is helpful then talking about the capability you know of adding value to the business in data science i don't think a degree is completely necessary right now like in our current in our current digital world there are like thousands of courses thousands of courses and really really good resources um they are like extensive amount of introductory material uh like as we go deeper there might be less but extensive amount of introductory material that makes it a lot easier for a lot of people to come to cut through it and if you see machine learning and data science although existed as concepts in in research for a long time they become relevant in the last couple of decades two to three decades because computers got cheaper uh like processing power got cheaper and we had access to a lot of data we are the tipping point right <laughs> we suddenly company became cheaper and we suddenly had a lot of data so that's why data science is relevant today and not a decade before or not a decade after right so let's talk about <clears throat> how i started my data science journey so so i was in my college uh, i did bachelor's from iit gandhi nagar in electrical engineering from 2013 to 2017 um i should say <laughs> uh yeah i should have taken computer science that i realized that in within the first one and a half year uh i don't know why but yeah so then i started taking computer science courses like algorithms data structures then i met a professor called dinesh garg mr dinesh garg so he graduated he did phd from iisc bangalore and he is his research is mostly on core machine learning um i started working with him uh, and i took a course of his called machine learning uh, introduction to machine learning uh, andrew ng's course machine learning on coursera like the first one that was there on the internet first machine learning course <laughs> that that also is a game changer for me so before that um i did not even know what data science is i did not know what uh, what potential it um, data science has and the tipping point we are in right now right so uh andrew ng's course in his course he talks about a lot of topics of machine learning and also he talks about a lot of applications right a lot of things where uh data science and machine learning can be useful right that that really that really felt awesome like um cutting through a lot of industries and affecting and facilitating <coughs> growth of a lot of industries uh that that was the first you know like uh selling point that got me attracted to data science and then i started my journey you know like doing some projects taking courses online you know and then uh, i i started learning things by myself and um, yeah and uh, <laughs> yeah that's how that's how it got started the first project that i worked on was um so there so intel actually conducts a bi-yearly uh embedded systems con- contest in china so i joined a team who was working for that so in that they were trying to a uh, build a net cloud network where every person's you know medical history is recorded in the cloud based on a fingerprint or face recognition like once once they meet an accident or something like the emergency response team they just scans his face or uh, you know like uh uses his fingerprint to fetch all his um information because prior history like if one is di- suffering from diabetes they can't give some treatment you know like uh, in the first aid so stuff like that they wanted to uh, complement human intervention with machine intelligence so i worked on one part using face recognition part that's the first thing that i worked on uh, so it's it's part of a really big project you know if you see a lot of deployments data database deployments lot of um, net security stuff and 
machine learning was just a single part um yeah so i started with that and um i really loved and the second thing i worked on was um in my final year so this was uh this i went on and asked for a deep learning project uh, so i didn't you know like as opposed to the previous one which had which machine learning was just a part so this was a hardcore machine learning deep learning project so um our professor was building software for drones to segment uh, the scenes right like trees uh, sky lakes roads paths grass stuff like that uh, so it was it was a it was in the early stage so we were trying to see if um, so yeah of course like having a camera it uh, in a drone it records rgb images and we can build a model that that's that has already been done for a while and our professor was curious to do uh, curious to see if adding another dimensions of the same images let's say depth let's say infrared uh, or near infrared stuff like that is that helping the accuracy you know like uh, that was the thought uh, that led to the project so basically uh, if you see uh, neural networks are black boxes right uh, we we can't explain why the model is working on a specific example in a specific way right so let's say we give 100 images to our model which all had you know blue sky uh, right and if we suddenly give one image that had blue lake the model might have associated blue with sky right i'm talking from a segmentation point of view so um yeah that to eliminate that biases inherent biases that model could learn we used the other dimension so depth so depth of a lake is always nearer right than depth of sky depth of sky is infinite from the depth camera so adding that another dimension became literally became like a new set of eyes for the model to learn from so it increased it increased accuracy by a lot uh, that was uh, a really good experience for me uh, you know <clears throat> how research is being carried out uh, to understand that to be honest uh, i was trying to get into a machine learning role or in the worst case business analytics or data analytics role but very few companies were in that stage at that point of time like right now there are like a lot of companies very few companies were there so um i i joined the nearest possible you know like most closely possible role as an etl developer like i got to learn sql a lot um i was actually reluctant to learn all those things and i was interested in doing this <laughs> data science and stuff but that one year proved to be a lot useful and i still use sql day to day and i think any data scientist data analyst um they should they should be they should learn sql and it should be on their fingertips right uh so yeah to answer your question uh they looked at my projects uh, so capgemini was came to my college and uh, they were pretty impressed and i i passed all the rounds and i got a job um yeah yeah um <clears throat> the reason honestly is um i was feeling a little you know um the scope of me adding value was getting limited and i got a couple of job offers but uh, i want to try something else so, so like I, i never had when i never was all in on freelancing i just wanted to say like okay let's take a break and let's try freelancing let's see how it how it works because anyway i was working with us us people in trade and right uh why can't i do it directly like i just have to build their trust so that they can give me the data and i can add value so that's that's a very important step and why can't i try that so i i <clears throat> so of course as i said why would a company who's like uh 10 time zones away should trust me with their data give me with their data and trust that i'll do something pay me money right uh, they should believe in my capability they should trust me and i should form that relationship right so doing everything on our own uh, it's kind of difficult so toptel was a solution so toptel was a marketplace that would connect freelancers and uh, businesses that are wanting it professionals right uh, there so toptel is kind of an exclusive network so they vet their network people so they have an extensive vetting of the people and only when they pass they'll be able to browse through the projects that are available right so clients have certain kind of trust on the candidate already so that step is fulfilled by toptel for me It's because i passed that test 
and then uh, the interviews came i passed this interview with uh, my current client they were very impressed started working with them and so yeah again i was not completely sold on doing freelancing but i really loved the experience because um, according to the middleman basically uh, i was getting paid more i was getting uh, you know like to form a lot of relationships networking so previously in service based company there used to be an on site there used to be a lead and stuff like there's no connectivity with the client and often times it leads to disconnect from the business needs you can't add value properly one thing and then definitely networking is not being done even though you're doing all the work right those two things definitely are bridged in this role and i'm i started loving it and i said why not let's see how how long I, it goes and yeah it's been more than one and a half year and uh, yeah and i have clients reaching out to me now and then so it's looking pretty bright <laughs> i think it's time india indian uh, professionals go global like i think uh, freelancing is pretty common in the uh, in the us and uh, canada australia because um in india there's kind of a taboo of not having a stable job i also got some resistance but um, like people have to trust on the uh, on their skills and trust that there are a lot of businesses that need their skills that that's one thing i would say um, and if that that part is being done by the professional then um, the economy as you see in covid is being connected there is no boundaries anymore like they used to there is there are no boundaries so i would say pretty bright as as long as i can see uh, and uh, every I, and i see a lot of people like previously when i started freelancing in my network uh, i was the first one to do and i didn't have anyone to talk to now i have like my juniors like four or five people in each batch are reaching out to me and they have been passed they are doing projects um, so everyone is adapting to that everyone is looking at the advantage not just data science um as we get more global as we get more connected uh, i think um i think it, it freelancing is definitely going to have a freelancers are going to have a bright future yeah